Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about how the director of The Incredibles, Brad Bird, mm -hmm. who is very good. He did The Incredibles and The Iron Giant. Uh, love Iron Giant. Love Iron Giant. Love The Incredibles. And he is actually going to work with his former boss, John Lasseter, at Skydance. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is interesting. This is um, another instance of... You know, some of Disney's best animators are people working in animation jumping ship. And not just jumping ship, you know, to Skydance, but also Netflix and, and yeah. other companies. I saw another one where two other Pixar people went to another place, like Slider or something like that, if it was called. But they, they lost them to another place, too. They're all leaving. Well, their stuff's getting direct to this video, basically, with Disney+. Yeah, Plus. yeah. I mean, you know, Pixar, the Pixar brand is is damaged at this point because of you know the fact that yeah everything's just been relegated to direct to direct to uh streaming, streaming. yeah so let's talk about this because this is huge this is uh brad bird who is considered you know one of the best animation directors out there mm -hmm. going to work with john lassiter who the media they still won't let it go they will not let this go they like look at this playlist i'm, I'm gonna go out to cartoon brew but playlist puts this article up Ray Gunn, director Brad Bird reunites with disgraced former Pixar head John Lasseter for original animated film. How dare he? Well, that's because they're mad about it. So I have to put the word disgraced in there. And we had other people, you know, jumping ship from Skydance because John Lasseter was brought in. And we'll talk a couple but minutes other about people that. who were like feminist icons were like, oh, I want to work with him. Jane Fonda, I think. Yeah, some other people. To, yeah. So, so I'm like, mm, I don't think he's that. Talks. I don't think he's that radioactive. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this because this is a very interesting, uh, interesting turn of events. I, I have more hope at this point for Skydance than I do for Disney animated feature films, mm. than I do for Pixar. Uh, you know, and again, this is just after, you know, we've had several, you know, major Disney talents leave for Netflix and other companies. It's not a, it's not a good look. No. You know, this is definitely a brain drain at Disney. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 259,000? Yay! Almost 260,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about the animation industry and talk about Disney. Um, this, I just think, is really interesting that, you know, again, I don't think John Lasseter is that radioactive. Mm -mm. Now, just to, to walk it back, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of a lot of uh, buzz about Skydance. Um, to walk it back with what happened with John Lasseter, John Lasseter was kind of the beating heart of Pixar. And uh, he got Me Too'd a couple of years ago. Yep. And the allegations were pretty nebulous. It was he hugged people too much and he touched a woman on her leg, but not, I don't think it was in a sexual way. I think just it was more she... like, a, you know how you reach over and touch someone like, you know, oh, I'm talking to you. And, and I'm not saying that it was okay that he did those things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not minimizing it, saying that he didn't do those things. I do find it interesting, though, if it was so terrible and he was such a danger. One, why did they let him write out his contract before they got rid of him? And two, why would other place scoop him up so quickly? You think they'd be like, oh, stay away from him. He's going to sexually harass the people that work here. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is once he got hired at Skydance, there were some animators. Yeah, they that, had a hissy. They had a hissy, but then a bunch of Disney people came over too. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the thing. Now, my understanding from people I know that have been around John Lasseter is everybody knows the guy is a hugger or was a hugger. Now, current year, that's probably not a good thing. Uh, I am definitely not a hugger. No, he is definitely not a hugger. I'm not a hugger. I'm barely a handshake guy. I'm more of a huggy person than you are. Yeah, I'm kind of the Howie Mandel. I think of the, you know, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a nod or a hat tip or mm -hmm. something. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not touchy feely, right? John Lasseter is very touchy feely. He always has been. Uh, some people love that about him because they're like he felt like a, a you know an uncle or something, yeah, like a family member. Yeah, and, and in this case though, it was it, it was like. It just seemed like a really nebulous allegation. Like, we've been telling him to stop hugging people, and he's still hugging people. So, me too. You know, I was like, what? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, you know, it's possible that he went too far. Honestly, none of us really know, because like you said, it's been very nebulous in description. Yeah. I just know that no charges were pressed, and they let him stay until the end of his contract. One would think if he was a danger to others and he was, you know, doing something that terrible, 
that they would have been like, there's a door and we're getting rid of you now for safety concerns. But they didn't. So whatever that means. Yeah. So he went to he went to uh, Skydance um, again, took took some Disney people with him. There were some people that quit Disney television. They went to go work with John mm. Laster. And, you know, if you start seeing a decline in quality at Pixar, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to I'm going to point back to Mr. Lasseter because he was. You know, not he wasn't all of Pixar, but it, it was based very much on his uh, methodology. You got the Pixar right in the Pixar way, the Pixar way, way, and all way that crap. the Pixar look. I mean, all of that that came from John Lasseter. That originated with John Lasseter and his team and his team. Um, so yeah, he's at Skydance, which has a deal with Apple, and they're making all kinds of movies now. And now this is the big one to have Brad Bird go to Skydance with John Lasseter. So we're, we're getting Lasseter and Bird together. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to, regardless of what you think of the situation, I think we're going to get a damn good movie. It's a safe way to have Lassiter near a bird. Oh. (laughs) Anyway. um, It was just sitting there. I couldn't resist. He's, I I don't think he's that radioactive now, though. And the thing. No, I don't think so either. Rapper, uh, just side note here. I want to talk about Tomorrowland. That was half of a good movie. It was half of a good movie. What the hell? I don't know what happened. Like the first half of, like he did a live action tomorrow. He doesn't do very much live action. He did Tomorrowland. The premise was great. The first half of it was great because it had that kind of retro yeah. futuristic, you know, thing going on there. And it was, it very felt very much like, you know, Disney's hopeful tomorrow. And then it turns into like a dystopian nightmare by the end. And that was the point, but it was done in such a way. It was just like, ah, oh, God. Yeah, man. I didn't. It was just, eh. Like you said, half a good movie. Half a good movie. Half a good movie. I wish I wish he would, could go back and. I think it. it didn't matter which half of the movie you liked. Most people are going to argue that it was half a good movie because they were so removed yeah. from each other. So anyway, um, this is coming from Cartoon Brew. Not going to read the playlist version, which is you know disgraced former Pixar head. Um, Brad Bird will direct Ray Gun for Skydance Animation, um, and this was one he had worked on before. It's his first animation animated project since Disney Pixar's Incredibles 2, mm. which remains the highest grossing Pixar production of all time, and rightfully so. It was pretty good. Not as good as the first one, but it was it was pretty good. The retro, ah, see, it's it it got me right there. Retro futuristic ray gun mm-hmm. is an unproduced project that Bird had originally developed as a hand-drawn feature at Turner Animation back in the 90s. Uh, the project proved too far ahead of its time. It was an intelligent and dark genre film in era Balto and the Pebble and the Penguin, both yeah. of which are forgettable. Sorry. Uh, Bird had to set aside. He would go on to do The Iron Giant. Well, I'm glad he Yeah, he The did. Iron Giant's amazing. Maybe, maybe this is going to be the Tomorrowland we should have I don't gotten. know because it's like intelligent and dark. I'm like, I kind of like that. That sounds kind of fun. Yeah, Bird wrote Ray Gunn's script with uh, Matthew Robbins. It's unclear whether... Uh, for this new production, he'll work from the script or rewrite it. Bird has directed six animated and live action features since he came up with the idea of Ray Gun. Here's here's the plot. Uh, I wanted to do a detective story set in the future. So Blade Runner. Okay. Blade Runner, but I wanted the future to be seen from the same time period during which detective stories were at its peak. The 30s. So this sounds like a Sky Captain. Oh, this might be good. I love Sky Captain. <laughs> I fucking love Sky it's Captain. So, it's so underrated. Scott, you know what I want? I want a Batman movie, live action movie. I want it to be based on Batman the Animated Series, done in the style of Sky Captain. That'd be cool. That would be the perfect kind of what they were they were trying to do when they had the end of uh, the Snyder Cut and they had that Batman thing. They kind of had that going on a little, a little bit, bit, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Anyway, it's before World War II and the atomic bomb. Um, this is an art deco future where everything is streamlined within an inch of its life, where cities are gargantuan jewels. I love it so far. I love this. That stretch into the heavens where flying cars stream through the sky, where creatures from other planets have joined the melting pot, and holograms are only in black and white. I'm there, man. Same time, I wanted to combine uh, two disparate worlds from the same period. Squeaky clean look of Buck Rogers and gritty been around characters from pulp novels. That actually sounds... Pretty awesome. This actually sounds like a movie. I would. This sounds like something we, more we would like. Yes, you especially. Oh yeah, I'm I'm like all about this. I'm I'm all about this. I want this. Uh, yeah. So we did the Incredibles. We did Ratatouille. I didn't really. Yeah, Ratatouille is okay. It was okay. Our daughter likes Ratatouille quite a bit. She was just watching it like yesterday, the day before. She watches that one all the time. Yep. Now, okay. So he spoke about the movie with Deadline. Um, he said he had some of his best. Filmmaking experiences with Skydance and Pixar. So it's wonderful to be working with uh, David Ellison, John Lasseter, and Dana Goldberg again. So again, we have, you know, Pixar mm-hmm. crew. The people uh, that, that made it go? Yep. On a film I wanted to make for a long time. Uh, 
Lasseter joined Skydance in January 2019 after being forced out of Disney over sexual harassment allegations. Yeah, allegations. Yep, Bird was one of the very few, if not the only one, of Lasseter's former colleagues who remained supportive of him publicly. He did so knowing it would cause blowback. Well, with, you know, why would you do that if you really thought the person was guilty or yeah. you thought it was being construed in a way that was – the way it was being construed, it was, it was accurate. You wouldn't. I – my understanding is there are – there were a lot of people at Disney and Pixar who supported John Lasseter, but they could not speak out in his defense because they knew they would get fired. Oh, kind of like what happens with us on YouTube. Yeah, oh, yeah. And other YouTubers. You know? Oh, yeah. We get people come to us all the time and we're like, hey, don't tell anybody we're talking to you, but we you like, know, you like your show. You I just can't talk about we you publicly. Can't, you know, yeah. We it's can't like say pussies. anything. We'll get, we'll get fired. <laughs> so. I think this is changing, though. But he says, yeah, I'm an old friend of John's and I don't see him in black and white and see him as a person like anyone else. He was a person who was very protective of us at a time when we needed it. So my feelings are a little bit more complicated. Uh, other Laster collaborators have remained largely silent about what happened. It's become clear that there are many top figures in the industry who are willing to give him another chance. Um, so this is, wait, oh, here. There's another former Lasseter colleague who's been developing projects for Skydance, Rich Moore, who did Zootopia and Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, well, hot damn, this is getting interesting. Uh, Tango, Tango director. Guy moved too. Nathan Greeno has also moved to Skydance, where he's been developing a project called. So basically, Cuckoo. it took Lasseter, and everybody's coming with him, or coming over there because Lasseter's there. Oh, this is good. Or be one great. of their other friends went yeah. with Lasseter, and then they got them to come over. So they're like all the people that worked on their major Disney's major stuff is is are heading over to Skydance. Skydance. So Skydance is going to be what. God, Disney's really drawn. Skydance does what Disney don't. Yeah, but they, the thing is, this has been happening. I mean, we have Glenn Keane mm -hmm. doing Which movies. Which Pinky Boo watched that the other day, too. Yeah, it looked pretty good. She said it was sad. It. Well, I'm sure it probably was sad, but uh, she was crying. I know she's crying. Klaus was done by uh, Klaus the amazing. director. I think it was the director of Tarzan. But the Klaus was amazing. I mean, it's like Disney is really coming in dead last when it comes to animation. They might be doing well at the box office, but like... They're going to get their ass kicked. Especially when they keep just pu putting all their hope on these live action remakes. Yeah. And things like that. Which m even people who love Disney are like, stop Disney. Just stop and make new things. And they just won't listen. They keep putting that double and tripling down on these. I'm hoping they, ca they catch wind of how stupid it is. Like the Galactic Star Cruise where they start listening. They haven't listened on that. And that they're going to like, you know, walk back some of these plans. Because they're not good ones. Or they're just going to put it direct to streaming instead because they need content there, maybe. But when it comes to, like, being competitive, they're going to have to start being innovators again instead of appropriators. Yeah, and, and they're really losing. And this kind of reminds me of what happened in the 70s and 80s. And you had, you know, Don Bluth mm -hmm. you know, come up. And you had so much competition. There were so many 80s animated films that are so much better than what Disney was putting mm -hmm. out. And it wasn't until the late 80s, early 90s that they made a comeback. But... Um, they got their asses. Yeah, they almost, kicked. yeah. How much time, many times they almost lose the company oh, because yeah. of their stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I just want to wrap it up with this. So while I was looking for information on uh, Pixar, Brad Bird on Cartoon Brew, I found this article from a couple of years ago where this this is the president of Pixar. Oh, you got to be kidding At the time, me, right? saying that these guys weren't going to be, they weren't going to be in the industry in 10 years. Why would he say old. that? They're too old. Those, Says the guy who's really old, but you know. Yeah, those guys are all middle-aged or older, and they're not going to be filmmakers 10 years from now. They're not going to be necessarily the ones that have their finger on the zeitgeist. We know, we know that. Animated films come from people of their time. That makes sense. Just as John was and Andrew and Pete and Lee made their first films. Uh, Doctor's currently 51. He's actually in charge of Pixar now. Uh -huh. Uncritch is 52. Stanton's 53. Uh, they'll all be younger 10 years than Morris's today. Yeah, so I was going to say, dude himself isn't exactly like a young one. Don Bluth is starting new projects now, and he's I was going to mention 80s. that. I was going to mention what about Don Bluth? I was just going to mention that he's um uh, Dragon's Lair. I guess he, from what I read, the, the live action Dragon's Lair movie, he's coming in as a producer or a co director, and he's like 84, 85 years old. Right? Why would you ever say that? What a douche! What a douchebag! But this this is the mindset. Yeah, they're basically saying these guys are younger than you are. Right? Well, well, to be fair, when Lasser left, it took him and the other chick to replace him. It took two yeah. people. Yeah, it did. Splitting and, the duties to replace him. And, and even then, they haven't done well. No, they haven't really. Go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, because, like, Lasseter was running Pixar and Walt Disney animation. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why the 
the Disney movies started to feel more like Pixar because of him. But like he's taking all these people with him. Well, that's okay. Tangled, no, no, no matter. Yeah. They're all going to be, no one's going to care if these people are in 10 years because <laughs> they're old. That That is Disney's undoing right there. That's their Achilles heels. They're all like, we got to chase the, the hot young audience, whatever that is. That's well, one of their Achilles heels. The other's the arrogance. The arrogance. And this guy, honestly, he's probably just saying that because he knows he's an older white guy. And he's, You'll eat he's me dead. last. You'll eat me last. <laughs> that's exactly what this is. I hope, I hope Skydance gives Disney a blank eye so they, they up their game. Because we know they're capable of doing it, but the problem is, is that it, it depends on the people they have working for them. And if all the, the good animation employees are gone. Well, you know, him making that comment about the ages comment, Disney ages confirmed. After he makes that comment, my next question, my, my next point is, well, since he's gonna be so old, why don't they have someone younger come and replace him right now? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Get the hell out. Make, make room for somebody else. Make right. room for you old white man make room for somebody Wait, else because if you're in charge aren't you the one that's supposed to have your your thumb on the pulse of what's popular you're, you're the one that green lights this shit right so wouldn't right? it be the person in charge that should be the young person that knows what the hell's going on just say in there jim kisses. kisses all right so we're gonna wrap this up uh -huh. please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants and we'll talk later bye